Here now follows a message from the Prime Minister of Great Britain. Hello, Boris here. Hadi du bois. Now, I know that my popularity has gone with the wind and, and has fallen lower than a statue that's been ripped off as plinth and flung in a river. I sincerely apologize for this COVID calamity. And as a small compensation, I'd like to introduce to you a new show to keep you entertained while we sort this mess out. Uh, so here it is, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to TT, the self isolate show. Did you hear about the movie? Yes, they've taken it off Netflix. How can they be so beastly? Don't you remember I told you that might happen, didn't I, my sweet? Things have changed since... Since Black Lives Matter. Don't you understand me? But if they don't have Wi-Fi, they can still go to the movies? Shit happens, Scarlet. We're bound by a very different culture. But what does that even mean? The 21st century is very different. They've had the civil rights movement. Black people are equal citizens. Nobody wants to see films which condone slavery and reinforce the idea of white supremacy. Well, I'll just say it so you know how it is. You're a fucking smelly man. You'd rather be standing like a fool and agreeing with them, saying yes, and oh, it's racist, you mealy mouth bastard shit. Scarlet, you can't keep ignoring the truth. I don't care if they won't put it on Netflix. There are other websites who want it. Amazon or Scarlet, HBO. Scarlet, listen, I have asked them. None of them will take you it. You try YouTube, then. I'll take anything now. Just get this fucking movie back on the screens! Hmm. 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 That really hurt. How about if we cut it into little pieces and put it on TikTok? <laughs> Shit. It seems that everyone's looking for the elusive cure to COVID-19. And today, we meet a man who thinks he's found one. Well, in fact, from the COVID, I'm immune. I took a nice big tumbler full of hot lemonade, put in about 12 tablespoonfuls of rum, two aspirins, get into the bath, have a massage from Wendy, carry the shoes that I've been wearing on my feet, all of them, around my throat, put myself to bed, and stay in bed and just wank it out. Wank the virus out. And in the morning, change my pajamas, and sit on the bed, and then again I do it again, and then wank in the afternoon, wank again at night, and finally in three days' time, I'm cured. Could masturbation in self-isolation be the cure? That is what the world is really hoping to pull off. We can be on Zoom forever Dream of you and me together Without social distance A new existence Can't survive this isolation Craving for a new sensation I need your assistance Don't your resistance Come a little bit closer, baby Bring it on, bring it on Cause tonight it's the night when two becomes one. Is it on? Oh, yes. Well, I don't have a problem with any of this isolation business. I'm very used to loneliness. After all, I have been married several times. I don't know what people are complaining about being stuck at home. I spent four years hiding in a sack of rice during the Korean War. I can't remember for the life of me what I was doing there. Bad timing on my part, no doubt. I seem to remember I was on my way back from China where I'd been teaching a Taoist scout group. Before I left, they all very kindly took me up the Yangtze. Oh yes, happy days. Well, I've invented a great remedy for COVID corona. A small amount of chicken chopped with half a duck. And pour petrol over its head and feet. When you see the smoke and the flames and it's burning, that's, that's when you breathe it in. So, actually, how did you develop this COVID vaccine, madam? Hmm? 
I just pulled it out of my vagina. I didn't realize it'd be that easy. <laughs> well, I've developed a my own vaccine made up of all kinds of herbs and spices, you know, whatever. In order to stay safe when you give vaccine to the people, all stand two metres apart and throw it at them. You know, fling it at them, the cunts. And then I seem to remember everything turned into some ghastly camp and survived on nothing but an ostrich egg for three months. So I've got no complaints about food during the lockdown. Not whilst my corner shop stocks of custard finger. anyone for months and so I've had to do an awful lot of playing with myself. Drafts being my favourite game, time consuming though after the inevitable row I have with myself about which colour I'm going to be and who's going to start and by that time it's time for my gin and well it's time for my gin. British scientists are leading the world in the search for a coronavirus vaccine. Much progress has been made, but now a breakthrough has come through in the form of the humble pickled onion. Quality control officers choose the right onion, measure it, and log its details securely. Then the onions are poured into a centrifuge by a young scientist called Hugo, where they are whirled around at great speed. After which, saliva from a COVID sufferer is added to the vinegar, and another scientist who looks like Kenneth Williams checks the COVID vaccine is present. Oh, yeah. Now samples of the vaccinated onions are tested by volunteers. What do you think, Dorothy? Well, it's a thumbs up from her. So the onions are packed up, ready to be distributed to the waiting general public. Don't look so glum, old chap, it'll soon be over. Jim from Barnsley is the first to try it. What do you think, Baldy? <coughs> Hoofing, can't wait for the side effects, mate. Well, the main side effect I had was acid reflux. <coughs> I just got used to it. So then, it seems like the vaccine for COVID-19 has come about through hard work and the pickled onion. At the moment, I've been unable to pursue my foremost hobbies and passions, skydiving and tantric massage. Not necessarily. I do them at the same time, though, although I did try it once. But plummeting to earth from 6,000 feet starkers with a six-foot paddle Strapped to your back, just rather put the wind off one. <laughs> yeah. uh, I hope you're enjoying the show thus far. Now, for those of you who would like to go out for dinner, uh, please watch this next clip featuring two, two rather well known faces about how to behave in a restaurant. Foie. Now, listen to me, Bob. I'm putting my hand on the table, like this, okay? And I want you to touch it, not like it's obvious, just touch my hand a little bit. You wanna touch hands? Yeah, yours and mine. All oh, this corona doesn't bother me, it's a fuck up. My hands are clean, man. I just want some human contact. You might have washed them, but that doesn't protect me. I'm not symptomatic. Really? I had some diarrhea last week, that was it. So if I touch you and my granny catches it, what happens next, huh? 
and she'll die. Right. And I do not want that. I love my granny. I know, I love her too. Hmm. So I think it will be sensible if we, you know, don't touch each other till after this self-isolation. That's what I think. But you still like me, though, Bob. Of course I do. What the fuck you talking about? What is that? I love the way you chase me. Yeah. Do you remember our first time? You had me at go fuck yourself. Oh, man, I forgot about that. Uh, you know, I was such an asshole. I saw you with that dumb fucking look on your face like you've trodden some dog shit, like you're doing now. And I thought, well, maybe he's not marriage material. But I've decided to put all my time into catching him because, you know, I'm... in love with you. That's a beautiful thing. You know, I didn't realize you were feeling the same things about me as I was feeling about you. And that means a lot to me, you know. Maybe if I had known that, things would have been different. Maybe I would have married you. Hmm. Now he tells me. So what are you going to do about it? After lockdown? Yeah, what happens after that? We can touch each other again. I'll move in, we'll cook together, I'll pay my way, we'll do some horse riding, it'll be fun. So, before that, I'm gonna have to tell you. Hmm? Just remember I love you, you fucking asshole. I love you too, man. I've used this time, actually, to catch up on a lot of television. I don't actually own one, a television that is. But if I angle myself in a highly compromising position, one leg over my shoulder and the other straddling my little leather puff, oh yes, I'm remarkably double-jointed, ever since I was strung up in the market square in Burkina Faso over a small misunderstanding, the things I can do with my limbs. Well, there's not really a hell of a lot to do, you know, there's no Wi-Fi, that's buggered. Um, but it's just down to my dad's old scuddy books and uh, so on and so forth. It's quite good. <laughs> yeah, so, I, I decided to reinvent myself and I'm now launching a new Boris brand. A uh, tell it like it is Boris. A straight from the shoulder Boris. A no shit Boris. How do you want? <laughs> Hello everybody, it's Ramon here. I'm absolutely thrilled to have been asked onto the Self Isolate show. What a time have I been having and you've all been absolutely brilliant and we get loads of letters. What do we do? How are we coping? You're all doing absolutely brilliantly. I'm telling you, the world's gone absolutely mental for the past over a hundred days, but we've pulled together and we're doing it. We're kicking out the park. We're having a one metre a party and it'll get better still. But the spirits have been advising me, they've been telling me, and I've got one spirit who's just been absolutely brilliant, the late, great Sir Terry Wogan. He's been giving me a lot of advice, a lot of calming music, because they're self-isolating as well. And they've got a lot longer time mate, up there than we do. He's been playing a lot of music, doing a lot of wonderful interviews every day. And he's been giving me advice. And let me tell you, if you don't believe that Sir Terry Wogan, the late, great, was a psychic. Watch this clip from Blankety Blank, 1993. Check this out. Psychic Wogan predicts that in the year 2020, you'll become a colonel, promoted to sir, raise 40 million pounds for the NHS, and sing a number one song with Michael Ball. Shite. We'll see. We'll see. Amazing, isn't it? I mean, truly amazing. Who would have thought it? Captain Colonel Tom. <laughs> isn't that brilliant? And Terry saw that, and they kept it in the show. I'm, I just love that. I think it's brilliant. They had to bleep out the swear and get him to do a retake. Couldn't you say shite on the telly then? Oh, I've said it. Fuck it. The thing is, one of the things that, that, that we've been taught in this world of uh, the world of the psychic is that you've got to be generous. You've got to help others. You've got to, I, so I suppose, love your neighbour in that, you know, and help your neighbour. So here, today, tonight, whenever you're watching this, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to help you. Ramon, I'm going to go for a walk. And I'm walking through this field, because that's an hour, we're getting fit and getting the fresh air. We're all just having a great time. 
the weather's shite, but we go for a walk anyway, it's absolutely brilliant. There am I, strolling along, you know, away out of the fields and that, and here I get this voice, I think it was Sir Terry, it's hard to tell, I wasn't quite sure, it might have been one of the other DJs from like, oh, the 1500s or something like that, you know, somebody just read out bits of paper and that in the street. Anyway, I'm getting this message, look at the sheep, lottery, sheep, lottery, so I turned round, and there they were. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I got my phone out and I started recording. And I'm telling you, it's my gift to you, right here, right now, on the Self-Isolate Show, the lottery numbers. And I've got them here. Now, if we roll the video, we can see them there. There's the wee sheep. We've got 34, 38, 35. The two wee sheep there, they kept buggering off around the back of their mother. So that's 34, 38, 35, and you get 5, 10, and 1. That's my gift to you, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> is the lottery. I wish you the best of luck. And if you win the jackpot, that's your six numbers. You can say, thanks, Ramon, and away you go and get yourself pished. <laughs> Have a one metre of party. Now, I've been asked to link into the next wee item here. It's going to take you back to about 1970. Dad's Army. It was a great wee show. A lot of old men running about Britain pretending they could look after the country and that. And they made a right arse of it. And it was quite funny. Here's a wee clip about COVID-19. Can you believe it? They saw that coming as well. Uh, way back in 1970. Thanks for having me. I wish you all the very best. Stay safe. Look after yourself. And don't amputate your toes so you can stand closer to the bar. Just look after yourselves. Ramon, out. Well, everyone, as you know, we're going to be in lockdown for the foreseeable future until we manage to get this dreadful virus under control. I've had my experience of viruses before, sir. Speaking, you know, uh, for myself, it was terrible and I wouldn't wish it on anyone else at all. Why? What happened? Well, sir, I got the clap. Did <laughs> <laughs> you speak, sir? Yes, Corporal. I would like to volunteer to protect the virus because these viruses, they don't like it up them, sir. Well, that's not really the point. Well, I don't think you're the right person. You're far too old and you wouldn't be able to see it. Right, so listen up, everybody. Sergeant Wilson and I have a plan to beat COVID. We're going to attack it fearlessly and cut its legs off until it floats away. Platoon! And jump! <laughs> Again, don't know where, don't know when, but I know we'll hug again some sunny day. The question we ask as we smile through our minds. Folks that I know, tell them I'll see them on Zoom. And instead of six feet apart, I hope one day we'll start being in the same room. So we'll hug again. Don't know where, don't know where. And in that spirit of transparency, I would like to admit that we, the government, ballsed up our entire coronavirus strategy. Our response was way too late and massively inadequate, and ministers like Matt Hancock were constantly bullshitting that they had a grip on the situation, but in reality were completely fucking useless. Uh, anyway, I sincerely apologise for this COVID calamity. 
Worried about how you're going to get around safely after lockdown? Introducing the new COVID-19 GTI. Streamlined to pass easily through clouds of the virus. With state-of-the-art filters to catch diseased particles of gob and snot being coughed at you by passing pedestrians. Leaving your lungs free to joke and laugh with your friends and family. The COVID-19 GTI. Forsprung dog, fuck you, matey. I'm all right. Whoosh. Look at him go. I'm quite happy to wear the mask, you know. Uh, I don't have an issue wearing the mask. Um, but there is an inherent um, problem, I, I feel, uh, personally, that uh, as much as uh, the, the mask facilitatively works, the, and it's good for you, uh, the elastic, however, is really, really tight on the ears. Now, if you're not Richard Gear to start with, which I am not, and you've got big sticky ears anyway, which I have, then the elastic own most of these masks don't do your ears any favours. Because I've seen myself wear a mask on, and I look like Shrek. I do. I look like Shrek. I can't, you know. That's the only problem I've got with a mask. Splish splash, I was taking a bath. Up up by the Saturday night. Rum dum, I was lying in the tub, thinking everything was alright. Well, I stepped to the bath, put my feet on the floor, wrapped a towel about me, opened the door, and then, oh, splish splash, forgot about the bath. How was that? I know there was a party going on. Splishing and a splashing, rolling and a balling, feeling with the feeling, rocking and a rolling. Yeah! <laughs> Turn it off! Your, you have a couple, they went a bit mad, you know, the ones that own the sandwich shop, you know. They've been drinking a lot of alcohol and that, and um, flashing their bare arse at, uh, you know, any cars that pass. It's quite funny. <laughs> oh, 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 <laughs> look at me. <laughs> I'm a cartoon. And to excitement, it's absolutely brilliant. Look, they've even built me a wee cartoon stage. That I feel like I'm a wee, I'm in a wee cartoon London Palladium. Oh, the spirits, <laughs> all the old entertainers and that jumping the boots. Brilliant. And if I go to the door, I'll be in that world again. Oh, the all oh, the big cartoons, all oh, the super cartoons. You know, like the old ones, like Betty Boop and that. Black and white cartoons, very simple cartoons. All oh, the old ones, all oh, the old pre Disney cartoons. You see, I know my stuff. Now I know a bit about cartoons. It's absolutely brilliant. Oh. In the name of the wee man, the fuck are you doing here? What am I doing here? Well, I happen to like cartoons as well, thank you very much. You know nothing about cartoons. How the hell did you manage to get into here? I think you'll find other massive resources to get myself on here. You know nothing. When was the last cartoon you watched? Um, I like Rock and Bullwinkle. That's one of my favourites. Yeah, Rock and Bullwinkle's a load of shite. Uh, excuse me. Uh, the original Fred Quimby, Tom and Jerry cartoons. You know, not the, the, the shitty 1960s ones. Oh, right. So you like all that old uh, 1940s stuff. Good for you. But listen, I have got a job today here. I am going off to do some very important high-end 3D supercomputer readings to some very important animations. <laughs> like who? Flipping Morph? Morph was made of clay. Right, no, sorry, he wasn't. He was, yeah, yeah you're right, he's plasticine, wasn't he? Well, so am I. Ah, your heat's made of clay. So what big animation company are you working for? Well, I can't tell you. What? I can't tell you what. It's in pre-production. Oh, come in, Shay. No, I'm sorry. I've signed an NDA, Ramon. And you do know what NDA stands for, don't you? It stands for not a dicky bird to an arsehole. So I'm afraid that includes you, Ramon. <laughs> know what I mean? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Aye, very funny. Listen, pal, I think it's time you made an exeunt from my stage rather pronto. Anyway, I'm off. In the spirit of Looney Tunes, I'm saying that's all, folks. <laughs> I think you'll find the term loony is offensive to some people nowadays. No, I don't think you're allowed to say that now, are you? No, that's... Uh, no, sorry, as you were that... No, that, that that's out of order. Scrub that. Well, I just... Uh, I just told them 
I said, you know, when the surgery opens up again, you know, you'll probably just be able to go in and uh, get it burned off. There now follows a message from the President of the United States of America. People of the world, I just want to say I find this self-isolate show offensive. It's disrespectful and it's pretty awful. They put people's faces on top of other people and make them say outrageous things. It's disgusting. If that happens, I will send in the National Guard and dominate the Internet. You got to dominate it. March in and take off these computer faces and see who's underneath. It could be anybody. It could be Kim Kardashian, Justin Bieber, could be Susan Boyle, or even Liza Minnelli, Liza Minnelli, or Darth Vader, who knows. You know, when it comes to self-isolating, I'm the best. I've self-isolated so much I don't even recognize myself. I'm probably the most isolated guy on the planet. Melania's pretty good at it, too. In the White House, you know, she kept 30 feet away from me at all times. And that continued this year when the virus started. Great job. Watch this if you think you might not be self-isolating correctly. During the corona crisis, the lockdown enforcement squad are on the streets in an unmarked vintage Chrysler. In the back of that taxi, there are two people canoodling, and they're not six feet apart. We've got your number, matey. See those people in the open-topped car? They're breaking the law. They should be at home, self-isolating. That man's breaking the law. Go home. Stay indoors. Go home, ladies. Your hair's fine. That elderly lady is all right. She's just meeting her nephew there for some urgent supplies. Amber, don't be tempted because the sun is shining that you can suddenly sunbathe under that palm tree. Don't wave. Go home. And that woman in the dress. What's the matter with you all? Get off the streets for fuck's sake. Had enough of the virus and wish you could turn the clock back? Then why not go on a COVID-1960s cruise? Good afternoon, love. Hello there, sexy pants. No social distancing here. Everyone's tested before they're allowed on board. Oh, between the sheets for you, honey. Oh, cheeky. It's not comfortable, screen. Thank you. I mean, a real one. No, sort of. Right, okay. Look at pornography together the old fashioned way. Play traditional games that your granny enjoyed. And the captain will be on hand to mansplain the rules to you in a patronizing 1960s way. Hold it like this and just throw the fuck up. Hurry up! For a piss head. Fucking rat Why not listen to the hit parade? Get ready for your tantric oh. massage and go back to a time when people made their own entertainment with just a bowling ball inside a giant saw. Oh, I can't wait for this. Come along, Deirdre, smack her one. Oh, she's drowned. No health and safety concerns at all. Meanwhile, the crew are looking out for any signs of the COVID virus. Oh dear, there's something nasty on the horizon. Better tell the captain. Virus ahead, left hand down a bit, Basin. And Officer Rigsby checks that no droplets have sneaked in through the aircon system. Thankfully, it's all clear. Now everyone's gathering for the captain's 1960s themed swingers party. How do you do? <clears throat> Remember, keys in the bowl. Okay. Oh, you're a swinger? Oh, yes. Good. Oh, back again, old chap. I am. Jolly good. Doggy's my favorite. I do love doggy style. <laughs> what is that? Cheers. Tastes like piss. And for those passengers who are single, the bursa makes an announcement. <laughs> Get down to deck three now with your fancy shag. It's tender hour. <laughs> Swiping right, love. Yes, definitely. Mm, there you go. More condoms. While the cocktails are prepared by Mojito Mike, the fastest mixer on land or sea. Looks disgusting. Time for the evening's entertainment, and DJ Ship's Biscuit is tuning in for the 60s-themed disco. Groovy, baby. Dig that Morse code beat. And for complete authenticity, everything's in black and white. Shake a tail feather. 
While up on deck, the grown-ups are having fun too. Recreating the 1968 derby with bits and of string. And the biggest in the league by three legs in an arsehole. Yes! And Mrs. Cummings has won a case of Blue Nun 200 Marlboro Light and a week's worth of contraceptive pills. Result. So get on board and leave behind all those 21st century irritations like Twitter, Piers Morgan and relax. And wake up to the hangover brunch where the chef has created the spitting image of Boris Johnson. Terms and conditions apply. The 60s weren't all that great. Goodbye. So take care of yourselves. God bless you. And God bless America. Self-isolate you. What a crock of shit. Turned out he was a saint.